Okay, let's create a component that has some functionality. It is a component, which is a date component. It prints the current date to the view, to the browser, right? So whenever you use the component, it is gonna show the current date. This is not something that you can do with HTML. You kind of need some JavaScript or TypeScript functionality for getting the current date. So let's do that. What I'm gonna do is kill the ng command that's running, the ng serve command, and um, you know, to make things simpler, I'm going to use the console in Visual Studio Code. The editor comes with a built-in console so that I don't have to switch windows all the time. I access the console by control and the tilde key, all right? So I'm going to do that in order to run the commands. So now here I can run the commands here. I don't have to switch to another window. All right, so I'm gonna create a new component called date. All right, so the way to create a component, we've seen this before, ng generate component, and then the name of the component, just gonna call it date. I hit enter, and it has created our good old set of files, four files, the HTML, CSS, TS, and spec.ts, and it's also updated module.ts. This is a file that we have kind of been avoiding looking at and we're gonna avoid it for a little bit longer till we kind of get a grip of uh, what the component is and how it all gets together. We can examine the module later. All right, so we have a date component which is created in this folder called date. And again, just like the Hello World, it's created that folder inside app. So I'm gonna collapse Hello World and I'm going to get rid of these Hello World usages. Just leave one just to prove that the component still works. And uh, if you look at the date component.html, you can see it's very similar. It's created the name of the component and works. It's just some basic uh, component template that the Angular CLI adds it's for us to modify. How do I use the date component? Again, if you open the date.component.ts, here you can see the selector is app-date. So I can use that in my app.component.html just like we did before. And uh, since this is the root component, it is going to load two components now, which is the hello world component and the date component. And both of them are gonna be visible in the view. I'm gonna do an ng serve. And if I refresh the page, here you see it has rendered the hello world component as well as the date component. Now, in order to add functionality to print the current date, there are a few things that you need to understand. The first thing is how this component uh, files work together. There are three files here. They happen to be in the same directory, but what is it that puts together all those different files? How is it that it works together? In order to understand that, we need to examine the date.component.ts file. This is a file, it's a TypeScript file, which is the component, right? Every component in Angular happens to be a TypeScript class. So in order to create a component, well, you're using the Angular CLI generate, but if you were to do it yourself, you would have to create a TypeScript class first. That's the very minimum that you're gonna have to do. Right? You're gonna create that TypeScript class. And the class corresponds to the component. This is the first thing. After you've created that class, you need to register that class as an Angular component, right? Just creating a class isn't enough. You have to tell Angular that this is a component, that you intend for this class to be a component. And that you do by providing some metadata to the class, right? So there are a couple of things you're gonna have to do. First is create the class for the component. This includes all the functionality, the methods or whatever, right? The code that is essential for that component to work. That is your TypeScript class is the first thing. The second thing is to register that class as an Angular component so that when you use some selector like this, that TypeScript class is gonna get instantiated, right? And that functionality, the right functionality is executed. Angular needs to know what is the selector for which it needs to instantiate that class. So there is that extra registering part that you're gonna to have to do to register a class as an Angular component. 
What you see here in this file, date.component.ts, you also see this in the hello world.component.ts, you see this in the app.component.ts, all these component.ts files consist of those two parts. The first part is the class, the second part is the registration with Angular. Let's look at date.component.ts. This part here, line 8 to 15, is the class definition. We have this class keyword which defines a class here, it's called date component. It implements an interface, this is TypeScript, so you can have classes implement interfaces. If you don't know much about TypeScript, I recommend you check out my TypeScript cores on Java Brains. If you don't want to do that, it's okay. Uh, it's just like any other object-oriented uh, concept. You have classes that implement interfaces. That's a material. All that matters is this is a class, right? If you want to add functionality to your component, it's going to go inside this class between this open and close. All right, so this is the first part. The second part is the declaration or the registering process with Angular. You need to tell Angular that this is a component. You do this, this part. This is the part which is registering this class with Angular. There is this annotation here called at component. An annotation is a TypeScript way of adding metadata to classes. It's very similar to annotations in Java and I believe annotations in C Sharp as well. It's a way for you to add markers, add metadata to your entities in the code, which doesn't really affect the functionality of the code itself, but it's useful for frameworks or third-party libraries to examine your classes, examine your entities, and kind of figure out what to do with it. Kind of think of it as a tag, right? You're tagging your date component as an Angular component. And you do this with this annotation. Now this add component annotation has an argument, which is this object over here. You see, this is an object. If I remove the object, what I get is this simple annotation. Now this is an annotation which takes in, which is passing in an empty object, but an empty object won't do. What you need to do is pass in an object with a bunch of properties. These properties tell Angular how you want this component to behave, right? So you've created this component, Angular needs to know how this works. And when it finds something with an add component annotation, it says, hey, this developer wants this class to be a component. Now let me look at the contents of this object that's passed in with this annotation and figure out how this developer wants this component to behave. The first property in this object is selector. This is basically you telling Angular, hey Angular, whenever somebody uses this selector in the HTML, instantiate this class for me. This has all the logic that needs to run when that component is used. Here it is, app-date. So Angular makes a note, says, okay, I got it. Whenever somebody uses app-date, I'm gonna have to instantiate this date component. There are a couple of other things that you've passed over here. You've passed what's called a template URL. This is basically you telling, hey Angular, this is the URL for the file which contains all the markup, the template markup, the HTML. So go here and look at this file in order to find out what's the HTML that you should render. And then there is another property called style URLs. This is an array of strings. It's an array of paths to CSS files. So what you can see here is these two lines or what tie these three files together, all right? Angular just looks at the component.ts file. This is the starting point. Over here it's hello world, over here it's date. Once it finds that, it looks at the property of this object to figure out what to do with it. Here, it knows where the selector is, so it knows when to instantiate it. These two tell Angular what to do when a component actually gets instantiated. It says, okay, go to this path and get the HTML and show that. Go to this path, get the CSS, and style the HTML with that CSS. So this is kind of bringing in or bundling these two files together. Notice here it's a relative path. You're saying dot slash date dot component dot HTML. So this is relative to the component dot TS. It's in the same location as this component dot TS. You could of course put this file somewhere else and have a complete relative path like dot dot slash foo slash bar slash date dot component or HTML, but that makes it hard for you to manage your code. It's good to have all these files, related files, 
together in one directory and then use the dot slash to refer to the files in that same directory. Now in order to prove that this works, what I'm gonna do is change the selector. Instead of app dash date, I'm just gonna make this date. I wanna make this simple to use. And now here in my app.component.html, I'm just gonna use date and stuff, app dash date. I'm gonna hit save, switch to the browser, refresh. Well, it still works with the new selector. The other thing I'm gonna do is change the HTML file name. So I'm gonna have this be, um, let's say I call this markup.html. Now here you see the Angular CLI immediately throws an error. It says it's not able to find date.component.html which is being referred here. It's not able to find this file. So if I change this, press save, it recompiles and it works fine. I'm not gonna change the CSS, but it's, it's similar. I'm gonna put this back to what it was before and rename this file, restart ng-serve, and uh, everything should continue to work fine. All right, so now we've looked at the date component. We've found what are the elements that make this component. Let's actually write some logic and add some functionality. 